there were some very good reasons that they were trying to stamp out some of the old superstitions. There were many reasons. One of them was to make a whole lot more money, and that's another story. But uh, they did come upon hygiene. Now, hygiene has it very much, just hygiene itself and washing your hands before you deliver a baby, a huge impact on death rates. Uh, the discovery of the microscope, many of these things could have gone on just fine. And all the things astrology could do could still be going on. Mm. So we have now microscopes and x-rays and all these wonderful, wonderful tools and improved surgical techniques. But none of them could do what astrology can do, mm. which see, it's a kind of a telescope that looks into the fine energies entering the body sometimes actually precipitating a disease, how long it will go. Uh, it has many, many, many uses. It's, it's the only thing of this nature that is this that you can use in this way. And why shouldn't doctors use it if it's available? They're reinventing the wheel right now with uh, chronobiology and chronomedicine. They're realizing the sun and moon do influence us. Oh, my goodness. And they're starting to actually do studies of that you know, some cancer meds are much more effective if taken at a certain time of day. Mm. All these things. But uh, our advances in astrology and medicine are wonderful and miraculous. And they, but, you know, they had a lot of um, really strange practices, very weird practices that were, were you know, probably harmful. Yeah. And they were really, really, really strange. I won't even tell you what they were. And these were gotten rid of. Um, but they got rid of the whole thing. Huh. And um, I thought, you know, I have, I have a little book I wrote, um, Medical Astrology for Health Practitioners. And right at the beginning, because people always ask this, and it's kind of what you're asking, is what are its applications? And the applications that medicine today could really use. Mm, yes. And I could just, I could just really short, I could just read it. Hello, I'm Judith Hill. I've worked with medical astrology since 1983, following a decade and a half in a full-service astrological practice, and I've witnessed firsthand just how powerful it can be. I'm very excited to teach about medical astrology of the sun signs, air assigned organs, strengths, and potential health vulnerabilities in my workshop entitled The 12 Zodiac Signs in Medical Astrology bodily rulerships, functions, and symptomology. This workshop is part of Astrology Hub's upcoming Health, Wealth, and Fulfillment workshop series, and I can't wait to share with you the tips, idiosyncrasies, special preferences, and all kinds of interesting facts about the 12 zodiac signs that will be very practical indeed in your life work with astrology and your self-knowledge. So I hope that you will all uh, enjoy this uh, wonderful workshop coming up. To register, just go to astrologyhub.com slash Judith Workshop. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. You are in for such a treat today. I mean, so am I. I absolutely love when we have Judith Hill here on this podcast. And I know that you also love it because I get to see the comments and get to see the response to Judith's episode. So we're so grateful she's here. For those of you who don't know Judith Hill, she is an internationally renowned researcher, the award-winning author of 13 books, and one of the world's foremost teachers in medical astrology. Today, she is going to be talking to us about Kind of the, the relationship, we'll say, between astrology and medicine. And we were kind of joking before we went live. Is astrology the sister of medicine? Is astrology more the estranged spouse of medicine? And we'll let Judith explain why there, we could probably go either way. Um, but we also briefly touched upon this topic. If you're interested in exploring more from Judith, in an episode on the podcast entitled Planetary Transits from a Medical Perspective. So you can watch that one on the podcast. 
and or to directly go there, you can go to astrologyhub.com slash health transits, or we'll also put the link in the show notes for this episode. Judith is also one of the three featured master astrologers in our upcoming health, wealth, and fulfillment workshop series. So Judith is going to be covering, obviously, the topic of health and how we can actually use our astrology charts to both see where our uh, tendencies are, where we need to be careful about our health, but then also how to optimize our health with that same information in our astrology charts. So Judith, I am so grateful that you're here. Thank you for joining us for the Astrology Hub podcast. You're welcome, Amanda. And I'm very excited about today. Yes. Yes. And you're teaching next week, which is going to be super um, amazing to have you back two weeks in a row. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So let's start with the big picture. Can you help us explain the concept of medical astrology and how it's historically been linked to the practice of medicine? All right. Well, medical astrology uh, in the system that came up uh, through ancient Greece into the West is really called astrological medicine. And it's a system of medicine. Whereas medical astrology, you could use for many, many purposes, like what the Mun's doing, but a system of medicine, very similar to traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic medicine. And so the all through the West, the doctor was expected to know this. And in fact, you had to get a, a uh, pass your astrological exams in the European universities of medicine until 1666. I realized that. And it was completely legal with the church. It was considered a natural and necessary use of astrology. This was determined at the Tridentine Council in the 1500s. And it was not an illegal form of astrology at all. But what it does is it enables the practitioner to see the energies flowing in behind and informing the bodily nature of an individual, also the disease, the causes, you know, how, and then therefore how you might treat it. Also timing. So it's invaluable in, in many timing purposes, and we can go into that later. You just said something that kind of perked my attention, that the medical practitioner was able to see the energies flowing in, that the astrology was able to point them in the direction of those energies. But I don't feel that today's medical practitioners necessarily speak or think in terms of an energy coming in and influencing a body. So right. where did that complete disconnect or diversion happen? Well, I can pin it exactly. So seeing the energetics behind the body is still used in Asia, in India. And it was how it was begun in ancient Greece. And so medicine was looked at as you know, partly the energetic flows that behind what we see physically. So when we get to about uh, right at the end of the Enlightenment, right about 1700, and the new sciences were coming in, and they discovered a number of things, such as the circulation of blood and the true uh, reason we had a liver. And also they discovered that the earth was not um, the center of the universe. Therefore, astrology must be wrong. And so we also we began getting this very mechanical view of life, and astrology was very vigorously suppressed, and medical astrology suddenly was thrown out of the universities. It was right at its peak. Uh, its peak was in the 1600s in England, and all this, so they it lingered on till about 1700. Then it was just vigorously made fun of, suppressed, uh, very vigorously, and. It has carried on with renegade underground physicians all through the centuries. Hmm. Yeah, it was a change of viewpoint into the mechanical um, germ theory view of all disease. Rather than that, they even threw out supernatural causes of disease with both psychiatry and medicine. That was a big what, one thing the astrology was used to determine was was the disease of natural or supernatural origin. Wow. Interesting. Wow. And do you see that 
shifting at all? Or do you do you think we're still in the kind of in that mindset and, and frame? Um, it is shifting a great deal. Uh, you know, at my academy, probably I think 75% of the students are health practitioners. Mm. When I used to give conferences in the Renaissance medical techniques, I would say, how many of you are health practitioners? And 98% hands would go up. And so in naturopathic and alternative health, but I found a lot of RNs and um, a lot of chiropractors and osteopaths were very open to the combining the old with them. And, you know, digging up, you know, taking the baby, you know, the bathwater and the baby were thrown out. So getting the baby back. Okay. So how did the ancients view this relationship between astrology and medicine? Like what were some of the key beliefs or practices that um, that demonstrated their use of astrology? I would say there were three basic ones. And one was that the body itself in 12 zones was intimately linked with the 12 signs. This goes, our first written records of this or, or go back to just before it, about just about 10 BC, but we have records going all the way back to the tomb of Ramses V in about 1150 BC that shows some links between the zodiac signs and the body. It's called melothesia, and it, it means uh, you know, correlation of signs with body parts. This is very, very ancient. That's one of their most important tenets and the one I will be talking about next week, all the sun signs. And then the other very, very important key was that planets emit rays cosmic rays or beams <clears throat> and they have temperature they have level of moisture they they have speed they also have a level of you know like tension you get tension like you know you're tensing your arm and relaxation and so they affect the regions they're going through very very differently so saturn is always thought of as the seat of chronic disease I mean, just knowing where your saturn is is, is incredible so Planets affected you by slowing parts of your body down, speeding them up, heating them, chilling them, obstructing them, different ways. And then the third way, they had the four elements in the three modes. So they had uh, four types of, of natural energies, you know, ways, ways energy actually, you know, fire energy is quite different than water energy. So fire, earth, air, water. And then the, what the astrologers know as, as the, the cardinal fixed mutable, the three modes, that's the rate of matter in motion. So you could have, you know, fire is fire energy, but it can be fixed like Leo in an oven. You know, the sun was on the hottest day of the year in Leo, the day of the Hawaii fires. And, you know, so you know, we have concentrated fire in Leo. You have fire being lit in the Aries. That's cardinal, beginning of each season. And Sagittarius, our third fire sign, mutable fire, which is wildfires, running fire. And you will feel, if you learn to feel these energies, you'll feel them in these people who are prominent in these signs. Now, you all know your toe tapping Sagittarians. <laughs> and, uh, the, the doctor, famous doctor, uh, medical astrologer, uh, William Davidson, he used to say Sagittarius has too much life. Too much life. That is, that's, that's pretty cute. <laughs> the world, like wh where was the line? Where, where would a doctor use astrology and where, and, and what, what other sort of systems maybe was the doctor using to diagnose or treat or, 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 or would it be impossible to really delineate that way? Was it so commingled? Well, it was a, I would say it was an uh, astrological medicine. They called it astrologo physic. Uh, it was a three pronged stool. So you had astrology, you had herbalism or other medicinal remedials, and then you had patient examination, which included the, the, the West had the, the pulse and the tongue, just like the Chinese. The Greeks had that. Uh, it, the look at the urine, they would study the urine. And so the doctors, would even, um, their, their shop side often had a little urine cask on it. They were called 
fish profits in England. <laughs> nice. No, seriously, they would they would look at the at the urine and, and tell about the health of the person. Mm. They would also look at feces, sweat, color, body type. So patient. So those three together formed astrological medicine. It was a system, and that's what I I teach. I teach them you know, how to use this in the way they did. Mm. Judith, I think there's a perception that. Because of our modern medicine, we have longer life spans. We're actually healthier. So I think there's a perception that the shift that happened in, in this time period that you talked about earlier resulted in better health, resulted in better health practices. It, re- it, it took the superstition out and really made medicine something even more legitimate. And I'm just, I'm voicing what I think is in a lot of the collective ideas around medicine before and medicine now. So can you just speak to that? Well, I sure can. This is a subject dear to my heart. So there were some very good reasons that they were trying to stamp out some of the old superstitions. There were many reasons. One of them was to make a whole lot more money, and that's another story. But uh, they did come upon hygiene. Now, hygiene has it very much, just hygiene itself and washing your hands before you deliver a baby a huge impact on death rates, Uh, the discovery of the microscope. Many of these things could have gone on just fine, that all the things astrology could do could still be going on. Mm -hmm. So we have now microscopes and x-rays and all these wonderful, wonderful tools and improved surgical techniques. But none of them can do what astrology can do. Mm -hmm. Which see, it's a kind of a telescope that looks into the fine energies entering the body sometimes actually precipitating a disease, how long it will go. Uh, it has many, many, many uses. It's, it's the only thing of this nature that is this that you can use in this way. And why shouldn't doctors use it if it's available? They're reinventing the wheel right now with uh, chronobiology and chronomedicine. Where they're realizing the sun and moon do influence us. Oh, my goodness. And they're starting to actually do studies of that you know, some cancer meds are much more effective if taken at a certain time of day. Mm. All these things. But uh, our advances in astrology and medicine are wonderful and miraculous. And they, but, you know, they had a lot of um, really strange practices, very weird practices that were, were you know, probably harmful. Mm. And were really, really, really strange. I won't even tell you what they were. And these were gotten rid of, um, but they got rid of the whole thing. Huh. And um, I thought, you know, I have, I have a little book I wrote, um, Medical Astrology for Health Practitioners. And right at the beginning, because people always ask this, and it's kind of what you're asking, is what are its applications? And the applications that medicine today could really use. Mm, yes. And I could just, I could just really short, I could just read it, you know? Yeah, definitely. And, and, and before you do that, I just wanted to mention to our, our listeners and our viewers that we will put the links to Judith's book, to Judith's school. Uh, we have partnered with Judith's school. So we're very, very happy to um, introduce as many of our students into Judith's school because it's, it's an incredible academy that she's created. And if you are interested in this at all, I highly recommend you check it out. So we'll put the links in the show notes. And um, so you don't have to worry about that right now. You can, you can stay focused on what you would say. So go ahead, Judith. Sorry. So people always say, well, well what is it good for? And yeah. So number one, uh, selecting safe surgery dates. This is just absolutely remarkable. And that's one of the best. Finding the seat of chronic disease. What is really behind? the seat, the person's disease, um, identifying the seat of inflammation, diagnosing the cause of mysterious symptoms. It's remarkably good at this. I've had worked with doctors. Um, comprehending adjunct causes contributed to a disease, like is it that they're arguing with their husband or is it that their footwear is not right or they're not getting enough sleep or they're having a ghosts bothering them or some it's always something you know um assisting with fertility and conception this is 
I have, I, have a, I have a fertility course, selecting dates for cesarean section, knowing when to release the patient from the hospital. Many times the patient looks fine. You look at their chart. Oh my God, they're going to have an episode tomorrow. Keep them in the hospital. Um, defining the type, amount, and strength of your personal vital force. People are born with different amounts. Some people are born quite delicate. Some people are like mountains and nothing bothers them. And this really helps. We're going to be talking about this in my class at the Hub coming up. And just a few more. Um, identifying the length of an illness and its mortal potential. How dangerous is it? I can give some examples of that. Now, this is a fun one. Assessing doctor-patient harmony. Now, our medical profession just sticks you with any doctor. A doctor's vital force in the old days was thought of, it could heal you or kill you. You know, I shouldn't be so extreme, but some doctors, you ever had the experience, you've gone to a doctor for a year and you just aren't getting any better. He's out on vacation one day, his assistant walks in and does a little adjustment and you're fine. Well, I've had the flip side where I was pregnant and I was seeing one doctor that I painstakingly chose. And then she examined me and was like, I don't think you're going to go into labor this weekend. So I'm going to go to my daughter's graduation. Of course, I go into labor and I have a different doctor deliver and the whole thing went south. So it, it, I've experienced it on the other side of that. But yes, for sure. Back at the uh, Rosicrucian healing centers that I think they treated over 10,000 people using their charts, they would only pick healers that had their ascendant or sun harmoniously aligned with, with the patient. They were very, very serious about this. And uh, so a couple other things, selecting appropriate herbs and treatment. That's a big one. Identifying your or person's innate strengths and weaknesses. Some people don't know they have a secret weakness in their pancreas. Maybe they're going to be prone to diabetes. Or maybe they're going to be prone to something when they're 50, uh, hip break, you know, osteoporosis. You can see this in the chart. Um, understanding a patient's needs. You now, medicine doesn't do this. Just look at the moon sign. That's a number one. You know, uh, you know, as, uh, moon and Libra was not going to want to be left alone all day in the hospital room. They're going to want a dinner companion. You know, moon and Pisces are cancer. You don't want banging doors and clashing metals and constant interruption. They need a lot of peace. Um, alerting you to when a problem is far more dangerous than you would know. Bye. Actually saved a woman's life with this more than once. Determining the onset of menopause, menopause, menarche, you know, which is when you're period comes on for young girls, selecting the right surgeon. And I worked with this a lot. I used to select people's realtors, people's lawyers, people's dogs, people's horses. And I started selecting people's surgeons. And it really, it's a good idea. Believe me. Because you do not want to be lying on the table. I'm going to make a joke here and have your past life enemy be the surgeon. No, no, no. Okay. Then being alert to individual patient idiosyncrasy and reaction, such as Aries people are famous for very strong fevers or immune responses you know, on the table. You have to kind of be aware of this with them, just like they're aware that redheaded women tend to bleed more in childbirth. And they, the clinics they used to know this would prepare for this. Well, so do Aries. Uh, not always, though. And being prepared for collective health trends. Like, you know, when is suddenly the doctor's going to have just rashes of people with migraines. It mm. happens. This, this month, it's all frozen shoulders. You know, what is going on here? I mean, not, uh, not this month, not this month, but it can happen. And let's see, um, is the disease of a physical, psychological, or supernatural origin? That was one of the big uses of it. So they had about 15, I, I had identified about 13 to 15 etiologies or causes of disease in the old days. But astrology was one of them. But astrology is what you use to determine which of the 13 disease causes it was. Hmm. He came with the queen, the crown of their system. And so all of this has been lost. Everything I just said. 
has been lost to my eyes. I mean, it's, it's, I can see why. I mean, because, because it's such a custom tailored approach to, to working with a person and just the way the system is set up now, it's like they don't, they, they, they actually couldn't facilitate it in this way where they're giving custom tailored treatment and, you know, the Libra Moon gets a companion at dinner, uh, you know, when she's in the hospital and, you know, it's just, it's the system itself isn't conducive to this type of personalized treatment. And like you mentioned before, if it's as effective as what you're saying, it actually might help people get a lot better, which isn't always the, uh, the goal because of the financial aspect of things. So it's, it's really, it's really, it's amazing to hear all these things that it could help with. I have a question. Um, you said something about that you could see in the chart certain things like, you know, a proclivity towards might, maybe having a weaker hip. And so once, once these things are seen in the chart, are there actually things that can be done proactively to avoid what might feel like a sentence of, of some sort of ill health? That's such a good question, Amanda, because you, you never want to scare your client, you know? Right. So, so if, unless something is genetic, something, some diseases are genetic, you can't do anything. But say, uh, you know, some of my clients bring in a little baby and, oh, look here, uh, six planets in Virgo in the sixth house with the south node in Saturn. I'll say, well, you may have some, you know, issue. We don't know what it is yet. You know, digestion. So be alert. And you, know, you start treating it and strengthening the intestinal organs early. And, and sure enough, you know, the, at five years old, the, the babies, the child is now having some intestinal. And but you get on it right now, it's going to be a lot better if the parents know and expect it and they can treat it with herbs. You can actually, from a young age, um, train the body out of it, you know, mm -hmm. strength uh, to become much, much better vehicle. But some things are, you know, determined, you know, they're just going to happen. You know, everything is variable. But I have seen medical astrology do real serious wonders. Mm -hmm. And I know I read, I read all the medical astrologies of history. They used to keep these vast diaries and they've had amazing miracles too. And mm -hmm. it's just so helpful. I mean, if you can give someone a surgery day, that's going to be miraculous versus one that's tragic. Because everything, you know, just goes wrong. Why not? Right. You know, they, why not? Because the uh, sciences train the doctors that uh, time has no quality. It only has quantity. So four o'clock every day of the month is exactly the same as every other four o'clock every day of the month. But it's not. And we astrologers certainly know that. Mm. You said that astrological medicine. And I say it's okay. That it um, it can be helpful in helping to select herbs and treatment. Would that also be true of pharmaceutical medicine? Like, would it translate from herbs to like pills, or does it have to still be herbal? Well, it probably could. Uh, they didn't have pharmaceuticals in those days. Pharmaceuticals are built upon herbs. They just right. Uh, they would time the actual harvest of the herb, the making of the herbal product, and then they would time the minute they began the protocol, the treatment, all three. So say if you had a, they worked with energy. So you wanted a, you wanted a um, person who was burning up, always hot, always dehydrated. You wanted to moisten them. You would get moist type herbs. You would pick them under a water sign. You would harvest, you would, you would plant them under water sign moons. Harvest them under water sign moons, give them to the person under water sign moons, and then take the remainder of the herb and cast it into water. And they they worked with energy. And you made a very good point. It's all highly individualized. Mm -hmm. Modern medicine with fifteen minutes at the clinic, you don't they don't have time. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to something that we we touched on before? And the idea that we're in better health today. So, so what you just described is so beautiful. And it makes me like, 
I don't mean to it that way. Wouldn't it be amazing if we were doing it that way? But again, I think the perception is that maybe we don't need to because we're healthier now. We live longer. So maybe those those extensive practices weren't necessary and weren't actually working that well. Well, I'll put it this way. It's a very it's a very intriguing question. You know, diets have improved a great deal too. They had terrible diets in old uh, England. Uh, but you know, you, you meet these people, they're, you know, 102 years old on TV and they say, well, what's your secret? And they say, I had two cigars and a, and a fifth of whiskey every day. And it's like, well, gosh, if they didn't, they'd live till they were 120. That's how I look at it. This is like miraculous gene person. So same thing. If you, if you could use medical astrology and be healthier still, or have say we still lose people in freak surgery accidents. And we still um, can let people out of the hospital on a wrong day and they die. Uh, we still um, can very much improve treatments and the, get the exact exact medicine for them, not just the same medicine for everybody with that so-called same disease. The medicine should be, you know, looked at for that person. And oh, uh, we all, I mean, we're actually having uh, huge problems they did not have. They didn't have our, our levels of obesity and diabetes and heart disease and suicide. And so we have our, our problems. We do, we do have uh, a much longer lifespan. But only recently, when I was born, the average lifespan was 60. The average lifespan of Native American women in this country today is very low. And uh, at, the, at the turn of the century, 1920s, the average lifespan for immigrant Jewish women was 45 years. This is within the last 100 years. It's only really recently we've gotten this in the West. They've always had it in Japan. You know, these very extended lifespans. People used to die of um, tooth infection. But, but yeah, we have now um, all these antibiotics and sur surgical you know, miracles, many, many. So we have glasses. Yes. Okay. So basically what I'm hearing you say is that, yes, we've made improvements on some levels, but there's you know, not all perfect, right? But we've made some improvements that have um, extended our lifespan. And if that was paired with some of the astrological insights and, and wisdom and direct um, information, that it could be even better. Oh, much better. And also, in some ways, we've gone backwards because we've taken, we, we're down to about, you know, four causes of disease. They had 15. Mm. Especially relevant in psychiatric medicine. You know, mm. you know, if you're a mystic and you believe certain things, you will include um, many, many ideas in psychiatric problems that are no longer considered relevant. The Catholic Church might consider it relevant, but the average psychiatrist would not. So you have a lot of now. If these things were true, uh, maybe they're missing something. But if astrology works and it can give you, if you can get an extra insight into the body, uh, why not? In fact, uh, one of the old medical astrologers, uh, I wish I had his quote, um, but he said that uh, for a doctor to practice medicine without astrology was to wander through a labyrinth without a thread. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, oh, I, I had, there's a quote by Hippocrates. I had it right here. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, right here, said he required his, his students to study astrology, saying, at his medical school, saying the man who does not study astrology is to be called fool rather than physician. And years later, Culpepper, the great herbalist and astrologer, he said, um, a doctor without astrology is like a pudding without fat. And a pudding without, you know, butter or something. And these, there's these, these, there's these, these quotes are abundant, but I'm not trying to make fun of medicine. But in, till, until about 1700, it was considered from ancient, ancient times, completely necessary to have this skill. So it's been 100% thrown out. And 
there's plenty of studies now that show astrology works, but we don't have time for a research discussion. We can't run around saying there's been no, there's nothing that proves astrology. Mm -hmm. Judith, our community is very lucky that next week you're going to be teaching some of these ideas so that we can actually start applying them to ourselves and to, you know, to the people in our lives. What are the students going to be learning next week? We're going to be going through the medical 12 signs. And so each sign is going to get about 15 minutes. And I think that takes us to two and a half or three hours, actually. And we'll be going into the specific body parts and functions of each sign. The signs, uh, traditional idiosyncrasies and the type of vital force that sign has for that season. So even if you don't look or act like your sign, you still are imbued at birth and printing with the vital force of that season. What does that mean? Um, how does that influence certain ways your body may react or the way you move? And so, and the, you know, the planet orders and so forth. It you was know, the sign hot, is it cold? What are, what are the strange little medical idiosyncrasies, the diseases it's prone to? And, you know, the antidotes for those. So we're going to, you know, just 50 minutes per sign, but that'll be plenty. And uh, we'll have a lot of fun while we're at it. What do you think people will walk away what new tools or insights do you think they'll have? Well, for starters, they'll understand their own type of vital force, which is the force that runs your whole, it, it wakens all your cells. You're walking around on this, what we call the vital force of the sun. You have your sun in that sign. And it'll give you information on what other signs are helpful to you as healers. We'll, we'll go into that, what you should <laughs> use for a healer. Uh, what days of the year might be most beneficial for you, you know, where your energy will go up or go way down. I'll probably be able to get into that slightly. And that's extremely valuable. And uh, the area of your body, traditionally, the vital force is centered. And what that means, if your vital force is centered in the throat region or in the stomach region, you know, what that means and how it may work out for your life would be very very useful information for the whole for optimal. Uh, and and if people there's the, we have a spectrum of students, right? We have ones that are newer to astrology. We have ones that have been studying astrology for decades. Who do you think this is appropriate for? Or who do you think this is a good fit for? Well, the fun part about this class is that it's great for the complete beginner and the professional. Anybody who hasn't studied. Um, Melothesia or the, the 12 medical zodiac signs will gain an immense amount of practical, useful information. I, I like to uh, give very useful information. Yeah, I, I, I give them a little too much meat, if anything. So they're, <laughs> every time they just keep feeding it in. <laughs> so everybody will get something out of this, even the advanced to the beginner. Well, and the good news, if, if you do end up giving us too much meat, as you just said, uh, people will have access to the recordings. So if you, if you take the class and you participate and you get 75% of what Judith teaches, but then there's a 25% that you're like, hmm, I don't quite get that yet. You can revisit it. You can come back to it. You can, you can learn from it over and over. And that's the thing I've, I've really experienced with astrology is that it, it reveals itself in layers. And when you're ready for each layer, you get it. And then there's certain things that go over your head. But then you come back to it. It's like, oh, wait, I get that now. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't even understand what they were saying before. So it, it sounds to me like this. there will be some elements of that for students as well. Yeah, and the fun part is you don't have to know how to read a chart. You don't even have to have a chart with you, though it's nice. You just have to know what sign you are. You know, that's got the sun sign, sort of erroneously, but... The sign your son was in at birth is your birthday. <laughs> That's your sun sign. So, you know, are you a Virgo? Are you a Taurus? If you know that, you'll get a great deal out of this class. You don't have to be an astrologer. Amazing. Judith, you just said something interesting. I'd love to hear why. You said the sun sign, it's called that somewhat erroneously. Why do you say that? Well, because um, it's, it's the sign the sun is in. 
Hmm. It's not the sun sign. It's, it's just kind of said, it's kind of like, um, it's just an odd use of English. Uh, so it's the, the sun's sign at birth. The sun's birth sign would be more accurate. The sun's yeah. birth. That's such a great point. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but we can say if a planet is in a sign, you know, the planets don't rule the signs. You know, the sun is what's creating these signs, the sun's path. So it's a little different for the sun than, say, Mars being in there. Right. Yeah. Sign or Venus sign or something. But the sun kind of rules all the signs. So, yeah, it's the personal sun sign. <laughs> you know, it's a little, yeah. Well, you are an incredible teacher, and we are so very lucky to have you on our our roster of teachers for this upcoming series. So, Judith, thank you so much. We're really looking forward to it. Thank you for everything that you shared here today. I think it's so illuminating um, and also a little bit frustrating because there's such a disconnect currently. Let's go to that question that we had in the very beginning. Is astrology actually more the estranged spouse of medicine? Or is it more the sister of medicine or both? I would say it's the estranged spouse because they used to be married. Mm. Or used to be married and one of them kicked the other one out. Well, we kicked women out too. They, they, they made it so women couldn't practice medicine at the same time. And uh, yes, and uh, kind of in the same period this was going on. It went over a few hundred years, but um, it is the estranged spouse and it was they used to be so closely partnered, they were one thing until about 1700. Okay, so much has lost, but the good news is that, that more and more people are interested. They're coming back to it. They're asking the questions. So that's really good. For those of you who are interested in diving into this topic, go to astrologyhub.com slash workshop. When you go there, you're going to see three workshops in this series, one on health delivered by Judith, one on wealth delivered by Georgia Stathis, and one on fulfillment taught by Michael Bryan. So these three teachers, we um, teamed them up for this workshop series to cover these really important aspects of life and how you can actually use your astrology chart to optimize these areas of life. So you can either opt in if you're like, oh, I just want the medical one with Judith. You can just take that workshop. That is an option. But if you're interested in the whole series, you can opt in for the workshop series bundle. And when you do that, you'll get three, the three workshops for the price of two. So this is all happening starting next week. If you're really busy and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take the classes right now. It's okay. I highly encourage you to enroll in the series now because you will also lock in the promotional pricing for the series. So that pricing will end at the end of September. So now's a great time to just jump in. You'll have access to the recordings. You can revisit the information when you need it. And it'll be, it'll live in your astrology learning library. You also can check out Judah's school, which next week will be a great introduction to the type of teaching that Judith does in her school. So if you take that and then you go, oh my gosh, I want to go deeper. I'm going to go all the way. You will have an option to join Judith's school as well. The links for that are in the description or the show notes underneath this video. Check it out. Judith, thank you for being here, for sharing your wisdom. You are such a joy and such a pleasure and literally such a gift to all of us who love astrology and love learning all the different ways that it can help us in our lives. So thank you for the work that you do. And especially thank you for sharing it here with us in this community. Thank you, Amanda. I, thank you for this opportunity very much. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making astrology a part of your life. And we will catch you on the next episode. Take care, everyone.